Hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here. I am racing through from far away. It is every bit as good as I remembered it from when I read it the first time years ago. I read and reread it a few times in high school and it's like images are coming back to my mind for the first time in years. Uh, I was already gonna do a video on volume one and two and why there's such a great opening to a story, but Th three and four are continuing, uh, are, conti are, are building on all the themes, and I'm, I can't wait to dig into it. When I went to the library and I got this, I figured I'll, I'll grab some more manga just to sort of shake up my reading a bit. And so I picked up Alice in the Country of Clover, Volume 1, Knight's Knowledge. Now, I saw Volume 1, and I thought, okay, well, this is a start of some series, so I'll get, you know, like, what, Volume 1 through 4? And here's the problem. Then I bring it back and... It's not really volume one, it's a sequel to something else, Alice in the Country of Hearts. So my first annoyance is this should not say volume one, this should say volume 10 or whatever comes after the last volume of Alice in the Country of Hearts. And ooh, I, I don't like it. Now, I wanna be gracious to this as I critique it. I think the tone and the intent of this is to be to have a silly sense of humor. I'm supposed to be laughing while I read it, but the total effect is I, I, I fought myself to get through the first half of the first chapter, and they said, okay, I don't like it, but something interesting is happening, so I'm going to give this a shot. <laughs> oh, boy. I, it, I, I'm, I'm starting to make sense of why reading manga isn't always always a good thing like diversity in comics our boy zach he'd say the problem with sgw marvel is all these people just read manga and that's their only exposure to comics and i never really agreed with that and that was because my reference point for manga stories were things like uh kyoko hikawa and i think well gee it isn't a manga story just like a really excellent fantasy story but then there's manga like this so even though i think that the manga industry is ascendant. It's going to railroad the big two because it's providing the kinds of stories that the big two are going to be providing less. The more SJW Marvel and DC get, the more people are going to go straight to the wel the welcoming arms of the manga industry. But it's crap like this. Oh, it's it's like it was like trying to read an SJW Marvel comic with slightly better art and no overt political overtones. So one of the dumbest manga I've read all year, this in like Final Fantasy Fate Zero or something. But even then, they're still like a little bit better than the, the SJW Marvel comics that uh, you have to pay five, ju just for the low, low price of $4.99. You can read an SJW comic or you can get Alice in the Country of Clover and get a similar experience for free. So what is my problem with Alice in the Country of Clover? Well, what was actually kind of interesting about it is looking at it right after reading from far away, you, it's, it's really fun to look for motifs and similar things from manga to manga. And there are similar motifs in this that I see in From Far Away, but uh, the motifs are executed very differently. For From Far Away, the appeal is to take you on a romantic adventure story and to gradually build Noriko as a character, a character who's an ordinary girl with no sparkling magic super duper powers, but who is a real character and has real growth and you admire her despite despite her weakness, because the, because the things she does in spite of her weakness are all the more amazing because of her physical weakness. Alice in the Country of Clover, well, if if uh, magical powers, if those are sparkly, darkly, super duper powers, then I would describe this as bubbly, wubbly romance magic stuff. And, but these are all technical terms. When I write my history of manga, you know, there'll be an index for all of these. But bubbly, wubbly, misty magic romance stuff. Well, that's when uh, the girl looks in the pretty boy face in the eyes and the bubbles start appealing and she blushes and the ba-thump, ba-thump, ba-thump of her heart. And From Far Away has stuff like th that too, where they kind of like look at each other and the, like the bubble magic stuff starts appearing around them. But in the context of From Far Away, the romantic moments come because they're two people who have excellent chemistry. He's actually not really interested in her romantically at all. And she's not, at, the, at first she's not really interested in him romantically either. She's interested in him because he saves her life and she's dependent on him at first. And this blossoms into a friendship where she's, she's kind of, he's kind of like the only person in this world who she believes she can trust. So there's this really strong friendship and trust relationship, which gives them chemistry. You want to see them get to get 
get together because it's so obvious they would uh, th th that they're perfect for each other despite their kind of personality foils. So the, the romance of From Far Away is based on the relationships of the people. The romance in Alice in the Country of Clover is tee hee hee bubbles oh lovely <laughs> it, 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 it's it's literally reduced to a joke which is why i'm giving this the credit of saying at least in the in the context of this story it's treated as a joke the the joke is that after alice is kidnapped by the rabbit and brought into not wonderland she's cursed to have every every single person fall in love with her including the women and that means that they'll do like little cheesy oh alice you and then the bubbly magic starts pop popping up so romance is a joke everyone it, it, it'd really be horrible what if if every single person you interacted with uh was madly in love with you it'd be terrible so it opens with you know like, like she's a maid because uh, and what that means is they're doing like little cheesy kind of nudge and wink things like it's not sexual per se but they're doing kind of nudges and winks at little, uh, like, Japanese fetishes or Japanese uh, motifs. Like, oh, maids. Maids are so adorable. People love maids. Oh, he makes a little, a, a suggestive comment about, uh, about her. And then, oh, she smacks him in the face because she's sundere. Oh, I don't remember the channel, but I watched some great video recently about what sundere is. A sundere is a motif in Japanese comics where the girl is hot and cold. Like, she'll be really interested in the guy, and then she'll smack the guy, and it's kind of played for laughs. And the point of this YouTube channel, this is great, I never thought about it this way, the point of this YouTube channel was originally the point of sundere characters was to help the boy character grow up. Like, he'd have these good traits, but he'd be immature. And so the sundere girl would like him because he's so heroic, but then she'd smack him because he's so immature. And the point is that the boy needs to learn to be mature to appeal to the girl. And there's some reality to that. Like, most of the time in real life, it's, it's on the guy to pursue the girl. The guy has to be the one who has to get up the courage to ask the girl out. The guy has to deal with rejection more often. And the guy kind of has to persuade the girl that... He is a mature a mature man. What's kind of interesting about From Far Away is it's a little bit of the reverse of that. Noriko starts out completely helpless and completely dependent on Isaac. Isaac is completely independent. He's incredibly powerful. He doesn't have any interest in Noriko apart from being compassionate towards her and not wanting her to die because he's compassionate towards human beings. And then he gradually starts... He, she, so she's, she would be the one to say I love you first in the relationship, and Isaac has to be the one who has to kind of like warm up to the idea of having a relationship with her, which means that it flips the gender stereotype a little bit. But even that is something that feels like real life. Sometimes in real life, even though the stereotype is the boy pursues, sometimes in real life the girl has uh, feelings of affection for the man first, and. I love From Far Away so much. Okay, so in this, the, the romance is a joke, like, and her being sundere is a joke. Like, Ace isn't going to grow as a result of getting smacked for making a crass sexual comment. The joke, the, the, the point of the status quo is that Alice is constantly surrounded by, you know, sparkly heart bubbles and uh, men who are really handsome and women who are really beautiful who want to cuddle with her. And, oh, what will she do in this strange... City? Okay, and then this is supposed to be like the catch-up stuff. And I don't know what this is. What is this? So they talk about like a game. I thought she was in another world. Is this like a virtual reality? thingamajigga watched it. So th this didn't help me at all. Th this is the part where be I, I blame, I know that this, it might be a little unfair because this is a continuation of an older story, but that says volume one on it. I should be able to get into this pretty easily. And th this was completely helpless. This confused me more, whatever the heck is going on in this magical world. So, okay. End media race. Alice is falling. What What's going to happen? Uh, is there some evil doings afoot? Some characters, you know, they're all basically, it's sort of like using Lewis Carroll for inspiration to make up some characters in a setting, but it, it, don't, don't, don't think of this as an adaptation of Alice in Wonderland. This is magical super duper manga with Alice in Wonderland costumes, but it has nothing to do with Alice in Wonderland except generally taking inspiration from his characters, all right? So uh, I'll, I'll give this credit for this. It takes the first chapter to kind of show me what the status quo is before 
things start shaking up. I, I just hate the status quo. So, oh, she's working in the castle and the rabbit uh, expresses his love for her and she uh, di she doesn't want to be experience this romantic love from this handsome man, but he really is a sweet guy after all. And then the Queen of Hearts shows up and uh, she wants to give romantic, super fun stuff with Alice. And oh, it's so romantic. She's uh, she's getting squeezed in her boobs. Oh, Alice, everyone loves Alice. And, uh, oh. Oh, man. And then it does like a flashback. Okay, this is the good part. It does a flashback to how she got into this situation, which is pretty much a carbon copy imitation of the original Alice in Wonderland, except I think I, when I look at illustrations of the original Alice in Wonderland, I think of her as a six-year-old, and she kind of behaves like a six-year-old and thinks like a six-year-old in Alice in Wonderland. This girl's supposed to be I don't know, 13 or 14, and she's literally stupider than the six-year-old Alice in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, the appeal of that book is it's sort of like the, it's like the typical example of the story about the little girl who gets thrown into a crazy situation that she can't handle, which is what happens to Noriko and from far away, but, but in... Alice in the Country of Clover, sort of the insanity of the people in Wonderland is treated more as a joke. So it's it's not like giving you sort of interesting logic puzzles or treating it as sort of like this strange series of dream sequences that Alice experiences. For Weeb Alice, the insanity is just supposed to give you some hilarious hijinks. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, uh, the Queen of Hearts, well, she likes to execute people. And the White Rabbit, he likes to shoot things when he gets upset. And that, that's another thing. So in Alice in Wonderland, in the original book, the Queen of Hearts being a tyrant who likes to execute people. Well, in the context of that story, that reads either as the Queen of Hearts is a tyrant. She's a bad queen who is a threat to Alice, and Alice has to survive this. This One possible interpretation is that the Queen of Hearts never actually beheads anyone. Right? So if you watch the Disney movie, I always felt really sorry for the, the card guards who were painting the roses red, and the Queen of Hearts has uh, orders them to have their heads cut off. And I'd feel really sorry for them, because it felt like, you know, they were just trying... It, it, I, I knew as a child that the, that the punishment didn't fit the crime. Right? So in the Disney movie, the Queen of Hearts is an evil villain. In the book, she might just be like a, a nut who likes to order that people have their heads cut off, but nobody's head actually ever gets cut off. And that's kind of playful. It, it makes the Queen of Hearts sort of a neat, playful villain where she hit, hints at something darker, like a tyrant executing people, but it doesn't like hit you over the head with that. In the context of this, is a bit weird because I think I'm supposed to be taking this a little more seriously than the original Alice in Wonderland where it's just a dream. Uh, in this, it feels like this Alice is in a real world. She's trying to accustom herself to a life in this real, real world. None of this feels real. It's, it's crazy hijinks, you know, because we need some crazy hijinks for the comedy. All right, so there was one neat, neato thing. All right, so I, I, when I said everybody, so we haven't even seen, like, the main squeeze guy yet. So the main squeeze guy, Ace, shows up, and he's got a sword, and he's kind of, like, full of himself and laughs a lot, and she's flustered, and, you know, I can only take this guy in doses. Okay, so she's getting more romantic uh, interest from handsome, handsome men with sparkly, shiny eyes and perfect hair, and uh, she, 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 she's not interested in that. All right, so after some of that, it introduces kind of this interesting concept that they live in this world where the world is constantly shifting, where the where whole chunks of the country may disappear and end up somewhere else. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting because that kind of explains the insanity. They have just enough stability that they can like make a life and build a building and live with some people but if on any on any given tuesday you'll wake up and the geography is different it would be very hard to have a stable existence and stable relationships so that means that alice is the only person who has a stable logic or a real world logic to for to her in a world where they have no stability they have no foundations that they can rely on for relationships. That's interesting. An interesting kind of idea for a fantasy world set up. You could wake up and the whole world is different and people you know are gone. They're safe in another world, but you may or may not ever see them again. No stability. Okay. Wow. That's really interesting. So let, this is the point in the manga where he said, okay, I'm going to give this a chance. I'm going to give this a chance to 
uh, really appeal to me. And then they sort of explain the fantasy setup and they look out and there's beautiful whales and these whales travel in like the rivers between dimensions between the worlds. And uh, Alice thinks, oh, well, you know, if I, uh, if, if I look where the whales are looking, can I see where my friends are? Whoopsie. Oh, careful out. And then she falls, she's falling maybe to her death. Okay. Oh, she just like got excited. She leaned over a railing and she's, she's supposed to be like 13 or 14 years old. If she was six years old, maybe I'd kind of understand making a stupid mistake like that, but it would still be like, you stupid six year old. Don't do that again. Like at this point, let, let her fall. <laughs> There's no hope. If you, if this doesn't kill you, it's just a matter of when. It's not a matter of if you're going to kill yourself, Alice. And as she wonders it, I, I expected like some guy to like romantically jump out from, of nowhere and catch her and get more sparkle magic. But no, the magical butterflies pick her up and set her down, which means that this had absolutely no significance even to like giving me a little cheesy romance moment. You fall over, magical butterflies pick her up and set her down. You could take that whole stupid sequence out and this comic would be the same dang thing. All right, motifs. The motif is she's sort of an ordinary girl in this fantastical situation. And so she kind of cleans up to make herself feel useful and she's kind of clumsy. From Far Away is about an ordinary girl who finds herself in a difficult situation she can't really cope with. And one of her ways of coping with her situation is to make herself useful and help others around her in small ways. So the motifs of these two worlds are almost identical. But Noriko's works because uh, it doesn't treat romance as, you know, a sparkly, warkly, happy, dappy, sappy thing. It treats the romance between her and Isaac as a relationship between two human beings with their own flaws and strengths. And I, the, the difference is I would give this to a boy or a girl because the story is so powerful. It transcends the, you know, girl story, boy story paradigms. Uh, Alice in the Country of Clover treats romance as a joke, which could work if it's like a spice in the stew. You sort of have like comedic bits about people showing affection to Alice. But the, the, the consequence is that uh, it's so grating that not only do I not want to read this story, I don't want to go back and read the stories that led up to this story. And it, it anyway, I think it's the difference between using motifs and just sort of like stuffing them into something versus maybe recognizing the value of motifs, but actually telling a story with those motifs and not just having like motif or silly scene after silly scene after silly scene after silly scene. Then once you have like that core connection with the characters, everything else becomes less annoying. When they do like a silly joke in From Far Away, it's not annoying because uh, you read that not as, oh gosh, this is so silly. You read that as, you know, poor Noriko, she said something embarrassing and she, does, she doesn't know what she, she said, right? So it's all about balance and it's all about having your core fundamentals down. I, I wouldn't give this to anyone. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't, it, it's rated for older teens, so I also don't think like the spiciness of the sexual humor is age appropriate, even though it's like not, you know, putting a big boobs in, bo big boobs in your face. This is kind of like a teasing sexual romance, whereas this is a much more chaste idea of human beings loving each other and what love might mean even beyond sexual love or uh, ero erotic love. It's love of another human being being the driving force of the story, blossoming into a romantic love between a, a girl and a boy. So, uh, I, 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 under, I, I understand fem feminism now, and I understand like SGW Marvel a little bit better now, because this kind of story doesn't give you enough context to understand what a girl with agency looks like, it, but this one does. So, it's a learning experience. Not all manga is magically super sparkle better than Western comics, just because. So. Uh, have you read more of this Alice in the, in the Country of Hearts and Alice in the Country of Clover? I, when I was at the library, there were like six spinoffs of this. So it's apparently a pretty big thing. Uh, if you think I'm being unfair to it, let, chat with me in the comments. Like, is there a better jumping on point for me than this? And do you think I have been unfair in my criticisms of Alice in the Country of Clover? I gave up. I know it's kind of unfair to judge something by one chapter, 
but first chapters are important and kind of the interesting little spin of the magical world that's not enough to have me put up with you know 20 volumes of magical bubbles romancy stuff so get you some from far away highest recommendation be gone I love you guys, and I love my patrons on Patreon, and I will catch y'all later.